Hi everyone, my name is Chris Verga. I am 32 years old and currently live in Stellenbosch, South Africa. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a disease I've been battling with the last two years called Long COVID. The reason I wanted to make this video was to bring awareness to the disease, also to connect with others online and hopefully share some encouragement or hope with those that are struggling with it. It has definitely been the most difficult two years of my life so far. But in this video, I'm going to go over some of the treatments that I've been doing to help me get better, and I hope it encourages you. Okay, so a bit of context of my health and fitness prior to my COVID-19 infection. I grew up with asthma as a kid and in my teens. I played squash and basketball in high school, but would only need my pump for high-intensity cardio situations, or in the winter where there was a chill in the air in the mornings and evenings. But otherwise, I felt pretty healthy and fit in my teens and 20s. Early 20s, I started getting into running with my brother. We used to do five kilometers around the suburb where I grew up. And I later got into a bit of trail running with him, doing 11, 15 kilometers pretty, pretty well. And later I got to try the Two Oceans half marathon, 21 kilometer race, as well as the gun run a year or two later. It was in my early 30s that I got into cycling. I sold a guitar amp that I had and my keyboard to save up and um, have some money to buy a second-hand um, proper road bike. I guess it's a gravel bike, but really got into cycling the last couple of years doing three or four cycle tours before the pandemic hit. So it was at the end of 2021 where vaccines became available, I was concerned about my lungs because of my asthma. So I decided to get two Pfizer shots in September and October of that year, 2021. In March, 2022, I had been struggling with, I guess, fatigue and a bit of exhaustion for a couple of months since the second vaccine. But I imagine that was my body just working with the spy protein and obviously learning to to break it down and cope with that but yeah march i did the cycle tour again middle of the month and i felt great the whole 109 kilometers i finished and i felt healthy i felt fit and i felt good yeah so towards end of the month probably from the the race itself someone you know in the crowd or whatever but i contracted COVID 19 the the acute infection for the first time, end of that month, so March 2022. And since that point, my body has not been the same. Um, it's probably almost two years to the day since I had the first inf infection. But over the last two years, I've been on such a journey to discover firstly what the illness was, but secondly, how to treat it and working through, I guess the, the real, real, it's kind of a trauma to experience such a debilitating disease and have to figure out how to get through it and how to get better when it's such a long process. Okay, so a bit about the infection. It was almost like having the worst flu I've ever had in my life. So intense fever, body aches, headache, um, sore throat, you can, you can name it. Um, and really, really difficult week. But I made it through and I thought I got better. <laughs> but obviously the virus had done quite a bit of damage to my body, which I only found out, I guess, in the last year. But following the infection in March 2022, I was experiencing a lot more fatigue and exhaustion in general, needing to take a day off work here and there and couldn't understand it. I thought, okay, maybe it's my iron levels. I went to a GP to get my blood tested. And those results came back fine. He said, no, your, your iron levels are great. They're good. Uh, so I thought that, okay, that's weird. Um, I went and got some vitamin B injections in my bum, top of your glute here. <laughs> Apparently it helps for absorption a bit better than your oral uh, tablet form. So I did a couple of those and you feel good for a couple of days, a few weeks. And then the fatigue was still coming back. And I thought, no, this is ridiculous. Um, I remember specific, specifically the one day, I think it was the middle or end of last year, I was <laughs> sitting at my desk and uh, we, we got called to a meeting and I remember feeling like I was about to fall asleep in my chair at this meeting and I couldn't understand it and I thought, no, that's ridiculous. 
I got up during my lunch break, raced through to town to the Ivy Bar, and it's a little business that they literally plug a drip into your arm for 45 minutes, and I just lay there and passed out for an hour. Um, went back to work, and for the next two weeks, I felt a bit stronger, but this fatigue kept coming back, and I was like, what the heck is going on with my body? Um, now, at the end of 2023, my HR calls us in, uh, myself and my manager, and says, hey, Chris, like we're really worried about your your health and your performance and your attendance and work has like gone down a lot. And I was thinking like, man, this is really frustrating. I know, I know I'm not like performing at my best, but I don't know what's wrong. So I said to her, okay, cool. I'm going to try to find a specialist to see someone who can help me find out what's wrong with my body. I then made a booking with a lady called Santa Lewis, who I know of through friends who've had ME and CFS, chronic fatigue syndrome in the past. So I went to see Santa and she helped me understand a lot about my gut health, intolerances in my body, and how those might be affecting my energy levels. Um, it turns out I have a gluten intolerance, a lactose and casein um, in dairy uh, intolerance. So casein is the protein in milk, lactose being the sugar, I think. And um, yeah, from there I thought, okay, that's that must be the, the answer. It's, it's diet related, gut, gut health related which is part of it, I guess, in some senses. But what Santa said to me that was really interesting was that she was picking up signs that I'd had glandular fever. And I thought, no, that's that's ridiculous. I've never had glandular fever in my life. Like I would have known, surely like, you know, your your glands will swell up and it's quite hectic. But um, she actually pointed out to me that she's been noticing in some patients that have had COVID that it is triggering dormant viruses in our bodies. So things under the blanket term of Epstein-Barr virus. I think it includes the herpes virus, but also glandular fever and some others that I'm not sure of. But from that, she's like, okay, Chris, I actually think you've got some kind of post-viral fatigue syndrome. And I thought, okay, wow, that's that's really interesting. But what, what does that mean? What is it like? And she's like, no, I think it's what doctors are coining this new term called long COVID that you've got. And I thought, oh my word, okay, wow, that's the first time I've heard that that term. And following that meeting, I had a few supplements to take from her, which helped, but the fatigue was still there. It was carrying on and on and on. And I was missing a day of work here, turns sometimes turn into two days. And this is not missing work for like the flu when you're coughing and sick and you don't want to spread your germs. This is like, I wake up in my bed at nine and I collapse back and I go to bed and I sleep till five, six in the evening. And then I'm only waking up in the evening, eating something for the first time, taking some supplements and medication, and that's it. So you can imagine the next year was incredibly difficult. It was only August last year that I had a quick check-in with my CEO that came down um, from overseas, and he obviously wanted to just see how I was doing, and he knew I was struggling with my health and, and struggling with my performance and attendance at work. And I told him that, hey, I think it's this long COVID, but I'd, I hadn't really heard of any treatments for it. As far as I'd seen online and, and been looking around, everyone doing these blood tests and all sorts of MRI scans and CAT scans, they were all coming back normal saying, okay, you're fine, you know, but people know they're not fine, obviously. <laughs> so um, my CEO actually knew of a doctor called Dr. Yaku Lavsher in Stellenbosch at the medic clinic, ironically, about a 10 minute drive from where I work. So I looked his, his um, I looked up his practice and what he does, found a very cool video and an interview with Jez Menninger, I think his, his name is, if I'm saying that correctly. And yeah, I booked a session with him and you do a blood draw and you find out if you've got long COVID and then you set up an appointment. Yeah, so in this next section, I'm gonna take you through that journey with Dr. Laubscher. Okay, so at my meeting with Dr. Laubscher, he explained to me what was happening in my body and what they were testing for. Um, the, the treatment they do is called triple therapy. It is a anticoagulant treatment in the hopes of reducing microclotting in the body and helping the endothelial lining of your blood vessels to heal. So what is the endothelium? The endothelium is the inner lining of all your blood vessels, arteries, veins, etc. And so, as Dr. Laubscher has explained to me, what has happened is that the spike protein in COVID-19 is doing so much damage 
to that inner lining of your blood vessels that it's causing a, a basically a failure of your clotting physiology in your body. So before I did the session with him, I had to go for the blood draw to confirm, obviously, the long COVID diagnosis, which then he sees you after that point. So the first slide I got to see from his office was this. They work with a lady called Rezia Pretorius at the Stellenbosch University, also close to where I live and work. <laughs> but they basically take the blood that you've drawn and they spin it in a centrifuge, separate the plasma, add a fluorescent dye and use that to pick up the specks of microclots in the blood under a microscope and then they take the photos. So really fascinating to see. And what Dr. Laubsch explained to me is that one or two of these small little green dots is normal. That's good in your body. As you um, clot and declot to heal wounds, that's a very natural process. So for example, you cut yourself, your body will naturally form clots and bring platelets and other, uh, I guess, proteins and things in your blood to help uh, seal that wound. And then as the wound heals, your body will naturally declot that. So what's happening here is the spike protein has caused so much damage. There are these microclots all over the place. And these are partly from the damage to the endothelium, but also the spike interacting with other platelets and other proteins and things in the blood causing these little clumps, which then results in so much widespread damage that your body actually can't declot these little microclots. So that's what's causing the issue. Um, here's another slide. You can see here, that's a massive little clump of something. And scary to see, you're thinking, this is in my blood. Um, but yeah, very fascinating to see. And these were the slides I got shown before my, my session. So context here, at the bottom right, you'll see 10 UM, that little U symbol. That means micron. So I know in my design field, a micron is a thousandth of a millimeter. So a thousand microns in one millimeter. So 10 microns there would be one hundredth of a mil. So you can check that for scale, that's incredible. Um, these are the platelets. So I don't know too much about platelets. I have no background in medicine or biology, but these are hyperactivation of platelets, which they are checking for. To me, these slides don't look terrible. I, I don't really know what I'm looking for, but um, we'll obviously explore that in upcoming videos and I'll be doing more research on that as we go. So Dr. Laubscher says basically the treatment that they do is triple therapy to help reduce microclots so that the endothelium has a chance to heal. Because what's happening is that at your cellular level with your mitochondria and the, the cells that store energy in your body, they are not getting the proper oxygen and nutrient transfer at a cellular level, a local level, through that endothelial lining to your tissues. So the treatment is to actually take anticoagulants. So right now I am just over seven months on these Pantacid, first thing in the morning, 20 minutes before you eat, that lines your stomach, followed by a Clopiwin Plus and an Eloquis, so both blood thinners, which is a little scary at first, but I'll go into some of the side effects in a future video as well. So yeah, I've been on this treatment for seven months now, and three months, every three months you do a follow-up. You can't, you, I guess they recommend two months, but for financial reasons, I decided just to do every... Um, third month. So here we go. This is our second blood draw, but the first after being on the treatment. So the trouble with this, like many medications, the symptoms get worse before they get better. So you can see the platelets are actually looking more active in general. And you can see down here, this looks crazy. Like they're almost like holding hands, like doing some kind of funny dance. It's like little alien amoebas doing a dance. And yeah, very cool um, looks like a star exploding so it might make a good album cover or something um, also very interesting and here are the microclots so I'm seeing less of the small dots here but still seeing these little clumps here and there so um, still like not great that's a huge one and that I don't even know what this is but that looks really horrible whatever that is and I hope that is getting out of my body soon um, that slide looks all right okay so this is now the six month process here, this next um, document I'm gonna show you. What was nice in the six month um, window, they sent me a kind of report that had everything in it. So this was the February the 22nd of 2024, this um, year, about a month ago. So 
in the first slide they'll first page sorry they will show you the collection of the slides that they've done the, this clot is looking really big so that doesn't look great to me but what i'm seeing here is a reduction of the tiny little dots so i imagine that the bigger clots or bigger micro clots are taking longer to break down and obviously also more like sturdy and hardier to um, being broken down um yeah so um the next page they do is the microclot scoring which is helpful if you want to check the micron levels of what's happening what's good here obviously level one is bad many and moderate for level two but endothelial debris it says none which it seems good to me severity score 76 that ideally should be zero to ten i imagine but yeah platelets you can see are going crazy now this is way more than the first blood test i did but i imagine that as your blood is um, being thinned and the clots are breaking down, the platelets are being activated to help heal the endothelial lining, but also to deal with um, other uh, dead spike and other proteins and other debris that's contained within these microclots. So you can imagine as these clots have been breaking up the last seven months, the symptoms have been really terrible. Massive body aches every day. Today is literally the first day I don't have uh, body aches that much and my fatigue feels a lot better today. This is now just over, I guess, 200 days on the, the medication, so seven months. Um, I will be sharing more about that in coming videos about the journey with the treatment. But yeah, you can see the platelet activation scoring here, which is helpful. I am not a doctor again, so <laughs> I take this with a pinch of salt. Um, okay, so this is for me the most helpful page that I found in this document and in my treatment so far. This is a negative control, which means that this is blood from someone else that does not have long COVID. Um, so they are healthy. This is good blood. So you can see one or two of the small microclots, that's great. But then you go to the next page. This is the positive control, i.e. my blood. So big clots here. These, oh, yeah, it does, looks terrible. I'm, I'm <laughs> but I'm hoping as we go on the next few months, these will start to break down. Um, the symptoms will come and go, but hopefully I'm going to be getting stronger as we go each day. So yeah, that's the sign off of that document. And that's a little bit about the treatment and the clotting physiology. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. In summary, um, please feel free to connect with me online and just comment below if you'd like to chat. And please share this with anyone that is struggling with long COVID or family or friends or someone in your community. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon.